Yes, in this class we will continue the uh, three span continuous beam which uh, we have discussed in the last class. So we have seen that uh, the continuous beam we have to design it as a doubly reinforced section uh, because uh, mu value was uh, greater than mu limiting value. Now let us uh, go for the design. So this design is similar to what we have done in your uh, RCC of your uh, B course. So design of uh, double reinforced section. There are two sections we have to design here. One section for the maximum negative bending moment which occurs at the cross section of the support next to the end support. And the other section we have to design for the positive bending moment at the mid span section. Now both the moments uh, we have got. So one value negative bending moment we have got uh, maximum negative bending moment 248.26 kilonewton meter and uh, maximum positive bending moment we have got uh, or 21.6 uh, kilonewton meter. Now let us go one by one. We will discuss uh, the negative bending moment uh, design now section design now. So MU limb we have got it has 139.7 kilonewton meter. MU value 248.26 kilonewton meter. Since this MU value is greater than MU limb, we have to go for double reinforced section. Now in the case of double reinforced section, we have to design uh, uh, two tension reinforcements. One is AST1, another one is AST2. So this AST1 is designed for uh, 139.7, that is for MU limb, and AST2 is designed for the balance moment, that is MU minus MU limb. So these are things uh, you have learned in your B level. Now as per IS 456 2000, we are going to design it. So first we have to calculate uh, AST1, that is the steel uh, tension steel required to take care of 139.7 kilonewton meter. Now the equation, corresponding equation which is given in IS code is this 0.87 m by into AST1 into B minus 0.42 FQ is equal to M unit. So this is the moment of uh, ultimate moment of resistance of the section formula. Uh, now in, in this, uh, if we equate these two, M unit value of course here we have to take as 248.26 into 10 power 6. So because it should be converted to Newton millimeter, very important. If you do all those things, F is 415, AST1 is 10, D is 450, XU limb is 216. We have got that in the last video. Now if you substitute and simplify, the unknown AST1 comes out to be 1077 millimeter square. So that is the steel required to take care of uh, this uh, 139 points. So this is 139.7 kilonewton meter. Now the balance, the balance moment, which is nothing but uh, 248.26 y is 139.7. For that, uh, we have to design one more tension steel AST2. Uh, for that, the equation, corresponding equation is this. Once again, it is available in IS456. Uh, so 0.87 FY into AST2 to D minus D dash. Here D dash is the effective cover on the other side, on the compression side. So this is D dash. Suppose uh, if you are uh, showing like this, uh, from on the compression side, this becomes the compression side for the negative binding moment, this becomes the tension side. So this effective cover is also normally taken as the same effective cover as that of the tension side. So 50 ml. So a D dash is 50 ml. Now here everything you should substitute. So this value will be 248.26 minus 139.7 into 10 power 6. So that is this value. So you have to note that 248.26 minus 139.7 into 10 power 6 because kilonewton meter should be expressed in newton millimeter. Now if you simplify everything here, you are going to get AST2 as 752. Now the total steel, tension steel required. So this is the total tension steel that is required is the sum of uh, the AST1 and AST2. If you add both of these, sir, you will be getting 1829 millimeter square. So that is the tension steel. So the tension steel uh, normally uh, it is uh, in the case of negative bending moment. Since it is negative bending moment, tension occurs at the top, uh, compression occurs at the bottom. So we have to provide this steel. Uh, so if you calculate, you can provide 6 of 15 diameter bars. 
for this. So, 6 into pi by 4 into 20 square, that will be slightly more than this. So, you can uh, from adopt, uh, you can provide this uh, 20 mm diameter box, 6 numbers you can provide. That is shown here. You can see. So, this is tension steel on the uh, top side because it is subjected to negative bending moment. So, since negative bending moment is there, so we have to provide the top one, the main tension steel. Now, we have to calculate one more called uh, compression steel because it is a WM4 section. For compression steel, the procedure is you have to calculate the strain at this level. Epsilon is the strain in the compression steel, which is given by this formula once again from the code. So, if you calculate that, you will get this much. Uh, from the corresponding uh, reading of stress in steel, is obtained as 0.83 times uh, 415. This is also uh, given in the code. And what you have to do is you have to equate this uh, whatever force is there in compression steel to the force in the uh, tension steel, balance tension steel. So, A is T2. So, now what you have to do here is this is the stress uh, Stress multiplied by the area gives the force. Here also this is the stress uh, multiplied by the area gives the force. So, now this AS is unknown. So, this FSC, so actually this is FSC. FSC into AS should be equal to FST into AST2. So, this is FST. Now, if you simplify everything is known, AST2 is known here, it is 752. So, equate them and simplify AS you are going to get 788 millimeter square. The 788 millimeter square, you can take this as 3 of 20 mm diameter. That means 3 into 5 by 4 into 20 square is slightly more than that uh, 788. So, this is only uh, by knowing the, you can vary the diameter if you want to provide 20 pm diameter, that also is okay. But you should see, it should not vary too much, it should not be too higher than this. So, 20 mm, 22 mm, 20 pm diameter uh, bars you can assume, a number of bars you have to find out. So, AS is called at the bottom here because bottom is subject to compression, top is subject to tension because the moment is negative. So, this is the flexural design at the support, main reinforcement at the support section. Similarly, reinforcement at mid span you have to calculate. This is for this positive bending moment. So, positive moment bending moment which we have, which we have got uh, 215.6 kN meter. Here also this MU is greater than MU rim. MU rim is same. So, for that particular section, so MU rim is that much, 191 So, therefore, here also we have to go for W reinforced section and the procedure is repeated here. So, AST1 remains same of course here, same equation is used there. So, therefore, AST1 remains same, same as that of the support section, but AST2 will be slightly different because here the balance moment is this. Since MU is different here, MU minus MU value is different and of course D lines we are going to take same. So, simply substitute and simplify, AST2 you are getting 525. Here you have got 752, here 525 millimeter square you have got. So, now total steel will be AST1 plus AST2, 1077 plus 525, 1502. So, once again you can go for 6 of 20 mm diameter bars. But here, since it we are designed for positive bending moment, so your compression will be about uh, the top and the beam is subjected to tension at the bottom. So here your AST is going at the bottom. So see the difference here. This is this power of opposite tension. If it is negative bending moment, reinforcement is provided like this. So tension is still at top, compression is at bottom. If the section is subjected to positive bending moment, there is sagging bending moment, so tension at the bottom, compression at the top. Similarly, as usual, uh, this epsilon ST has to calculate using the same formula, FST is same. So, if you equate this whatever force in compression steel to whatever force in additional tension steel, you are going to get AST in this case as 550. Here you got 788. So, here you will be getting 550. You have to do the same procedure. So, we can find 2 of 20, 20 mm diameter bar that can be shown here. So, this is the cross section at the mid span. So, usually, so the support, at the support you have, uh, you have more moment, at the mid span you have lesser moment. Of course, uh, nature wise it is different, for support it is negative, mid span it is positive. 
Now finally, last step is to calculate, find out the shear reinforcement. For that, as usual, in IS 4.6, uh, uh, we have to calculate uh, one, uh, one tow V, we have to cal cal calculate, that is uh, nominal shear stress, we have to calculate tow V, VU by V. That is the formula, VU is the maximum shear force, 291.6 kN, which we have got. In the last video, I have shown that, how to calculate that using the shear force coefficients. Now, if you calculate that, V U is 291.6 and 10 power 3 Newton. So this will be Newton and the denominator will be in millimeter square. So V to D. So V is 200, D is 450. So if you simplify that, you will get 1.792. 1.792. And uh, we have to calculate the percentage of steel, tension steel that is provided. So we have, we have provided here 6 of, of course in both the cases, uh, we are providing 6 of 20. So 6 into 5 by 4 into 20 square, this is the area. So actually, this is nothing but even ASD provided. ASD provided. So provided will be slightly more than required. And this is B into D. So ASD divided by B into D uh, gives the percentage of uh, tension steel PD 1.676%. Actually, this is percentage. We are getting the value in percentage. So now, if you uh, use the table 19, so this is also important, and here 4 by 6, uh, uh, table 19 gives the shear strength of concrete. So actually, some amount of shear force is assisted by concrete also. So the total shear force minus shear uh, force assisted by concrete gives the uh, shear force that should be resisted by steel, that is the stirrup. So for that, what we have to do? So we have to read the tau C value. So tau C value is the shear strength of concrete. Of course, it depends on the grade of concrete. So for different grades, he has given. So for that M20 grade and this percentage of steel, please note, this is the percentage of steel. Uh, for M20 concrete, this is the tau V value. So this is uh, this tau C value. This is of course is Newton per mm square. Tau V also in Newton per mm square. Tau C also in Newton per mm square. So what happens, the condition is, if the nominal shear stress is greater than the shear stress resisted by concrete, so then shear reinforcement is, has to be desired, it is necessary. Otherwise, if tau V is less than tau C or tau V is equal to tau C, you can provide nominal uh, shear reinforcement, nominal shear reinforcement you can provide. But here we have to design, so we have to design the shear reinforcement here. So for designing, you have to calculate what is called the shear resisted by steel now, that is VUS. VUS is your total shear force minus shear resisted by concrete, which is something but tau C into B into D. So if you use the formula, you will be getting uh, that much. 11835 kN or 118.35 kN. That is the shear force that should be resisted by steel now. Now to calculate the spacing of stirrups, we have to assume uh, the diameter of the stirrup. So normally uh, the thing is 2 9 by 8 mm diameter stirrup you can assume. So if that AS3 becomes now, if you assume this AS3 becomes 2 into 5 by 4 into 8 square. Yeah. So millimeter square. That is the AS3 value. This is the formula once again given in the code. VUS is equal to 0.87 FY AS3 D by S V to calculate the spacing of stirrups S V. So if you assume a, a, a square is 2 into 5 by 4 into 8 square, 2 and 8 mm diameter still up, and if you substitute the values here, so VUS is that much, 118 so 1, 8, 8, 5, 0, FY is 415, D is 450, so SV you are going to get uh, slightly more than 130, you can round it up to 130. So now the stirrups are placed, uh, so we have to provide 2 and 8 mm diameter stirrups at 130 mm center to center, where it, we have to provide that. Uh, at the supports, near the supports, because shear is more at the supports. Whereas you can, you can increase the spacing when you move towards the mid span. So all this you have to your simple supported uh, beam design or can be your beam design your B. So same similarly you can increase that uh, this 132 to maybe 190 or 200 when you move towards the mid span. Because normally at the mid span your shear force effect will be less. So mid span. Uh, uh, you, will less, so you can increase the spacing or you can provide throughout also because uh, not much difference will be there. So finally, you have to check for deflection. So 
so seven for serviceability criteria check for deflection so for that in is 4.6 uh, there are three figures figure 4 5 6 are there so there are coefficients by reading those coefficients we can we have to calculate the l by d uh, maximum so l by d maximum that value that means uh, it is the maximum uh, ratio of uh, span to effective depth. Here span is 7000 mm, L is 7000 mm, D is 450 mm. So 7000 divided by 450 comes out to be 28.78, but actually, uh, this, this 7, L by D provided is uh, 7000 divided by 450, which is 15.55. L by D maximum we have to calculate. Uh, from those uh, three figures, figure uh, 456, which is given in IS 456. So, you can calculate can the L by D max from that. You can uh, get, uh, you will get 28.78 gains into 15.55. So, the check is that L by D provided should be less than L by D maximum. Then only we say. So, in this case, uh, the uh, deflection criteria is satisfied. So, this is how we have to design a complete design of a three span continuous beam. So you have to note down these steps. Normally they will ask this question three span continuous beam. Then we have this, this carries 20 marks. So we have done this using bending moment and shear force coefficients which are available in the IS 456 uh, code, of course. So uh, the first step we have to uh, calculate all those uh, loads and all load calculations will be there, head load, line load, everything. Then using second step, using moment uh, coefficients and shear coefficients, calculate the maximum negative bending moment and vary factors, uh, calculate the maximum positive bending moment and vary factors and uh, maximum shear force. So MU values, two MU values for negative and positive and one VU value. Then we have to go for the uh, design of reinforcement. We have to calculate MU limb. So compare that MU limb with the uh, MU. So if MU is greater than MU limb, we have to go for a doubly reinforced section. In that case, you have to design both tension steel and compression steel as you did uh, in your, as we have done in your earlier uh, the uh, course on CC design. So then, depending on the nature of the bending moment, so tension and compression zones should be uh, identified and uh, at those regions only you have to provide the respective reinforcements. At the support synthetic negative bending moment occurs, so your tension zone will be at the top, compression zone will be at the top to bottom and at mid span a positive bending moment will occur sagging. So therefore uh, your tension steel will be at the bottom ASC and compression steel will be at the top. ASC will be at the top, ASC will be at the bottom and finally you have to go for the shear reinforcement that is stirrup design. So for that you need to calculate tow V, compare the tow V with tow C from the table given in IS 456, calculate the balance shear that should be resisted by steel and assuming the, the two length radial diameter shears or whatever it is, ASV, you can calculate the spacing. So and then that you reduce the value of spacing and the spacing you can increase when you move towards the mid span or you can detain as it is. Uh, then finally you have to check the, the design for the serviceability criteria that is for the deflection wherein you have to prove that L by D provided should be less than L by D max. In this case uh, that is also satisfied. So this is this completes the entire design of a three span continuous beam.